Thanks for listening to Fluff and Crunch, where we talk about the connection and sometimes disconnect between system, setting, and story in tabletop RPGs. So actually, we're recording this at the end, but now that we're we're our, our, we're, we're getting better at YouTube, I think maybe a little bit. Um, we we recognize that we're supposed to tell you to like, <coughs> subscribe, ring the bell, join the conversation, join the in conversation, the comments, down, or on our Discord, leave comments, uh, buy the collapsible drinking glass, join our Patreon that we don't have, right. Um, and tell your friends and, and give our show away as a stocking stuffer for your, to your yeah. neighbors and stuff. That's Rate what you're supposed to your, do. So now we're starting the video like this. Now we can go into our content. Hi, Jeremy. Hi, Chris. Uh, yeah, we have El Cheapo Zoom. Now, I have El Cheapo Zoom now. So we only have, have 40 minutes to record. Uh, and we're like three minutes into it. And I know that you haven't done it. Well, maybe you haven't done any gaming. I haven't done any gaming because we only talked a few days ago. No, I haven't. Well, actually, I played a game of Shatterpoint against myself because... Oh, that counts. I, for that. So, uh, yeah, for that, yeah. Which was bad because I'd done a run and then I cooked tea and then I stood up for two hours playing against myself. And at the end of that, I realized I was in agony and I spent most <laughs> of yesterday limping. Yeah, you know, there's that whole thing. We're old. <laughs> when you get north of 40 years old, you cannot stay in any one position for too no. long, even if the position seems comfortable. Nope. No, standing, uh, it's just saying, well, I, can, I can walk and I can run, just standing still, yeah, yeah. it's agony. Yeah. So I have to literally, like, now I need to go for a walk or I need to, like, kneel down or I have to go up and down, up and down, just standing still. My knees just start playing yep. up. It's awful. Me too. Me too. Well, all that aside, yeah, we're here to talk well. about character generation. We're here to talk about character generation in the games that you and I are respectively trying to develop. Yeah, um, so uh, we kind of, I think it was pretty clear at the end of the last episode which way we would be heading towards in terms of which of the different things. Just a quick run, a quick recap then, super quick recap. We kind of have the idea of, you know, the one end you've got the kind of the D&D &D menu system where a lot of it's, you can literally, you can pick this, 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 and that's it. And there's not a lot of choice. So then the far extreme where you've got the like point buy, you can buy everything. And then we kind of said there's quite a few things, or there's life paths. And then there's quite a few things that fall into that. There's like a little bit of point buy, but it's you get this many points here and this many points here and this many points here. And yep. we see kind of see we were mostly talking about that. One thing I said we do need to talk about to add to that, but also link to, to link to what our games is, is actually, even if we both go, right, we're doing the multiple point by thing or the selection of different things, what actually then makes up a character, which yep. is why I've got this. No, it's kind of that. Uh, I've moved back to forwards enough. It thinks it's real. Um, because although we don't play Cortex Prime, Cortex does a very good job at breaking down. Here's all the different bits that could make up a character. Oh. Um, so I thought we'd run through some of these as these are things to consider when okay. and then which ones we can put. Because, you know, the, the most bog standard obvious one that we've seen since, or actually it's not since Day X, because I was going to say stat plus skill. Well, that's it's a lie. Just, yeah, because it's just stats old, and derived uh, attributes. Yeah, because old school, old school role play games didn't have skills. Yep. They just had stats. Uh, skills were, you know, D&D &D didn't really get nope. skills until third edition. Which well, is they, had, good... they had something. Well, anyway, yeah. Basically, I, I'm not yeah. counting proficiencies, right? Okay? So proper skills. Um, so I think the first time I saw like a system that was actually stat plus skill, like it is in, uh, like we have now in most systems, uh, possibly was World of Darkness. Um, because like I've talked about Ghostbusters and Star Wars a lot, but that was your skill is inside your stats. So it wasn't, that wasn't really stat plus skill. Like, I guess it kind of was. Maybe it was Star Wars though. Anyway, yeah, I don't really um, so obviously one of the big things, we'll start with a really obvious one, and it's on the first page, but there's another one here I want to bring in. One of the obvious things is the idea of attributes, as, as in, you know, a physical or consuming thing, which is super important. Yep. We see that in so many systems. We have it in, we have it in virtually all the 2D20 games. We have it in D&D. &D, we have it in World of Darkness. Um, yeah, only extreme outliers don't have some kind of measurement of some sort of innate traits. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and the idea is, is that, you know, if you're strong, you're good at everything which requires physical strength. If you're charismatic, you're good at everything right. that requires 
and so on. Um, and actually, the systems that did that, I think that's a, is the sacred cow is the right word for that. Is I think that is something you can ditch because the reality is, is actually most people are kind of in the middle and arguably skills are more important, particularly to a role playing game. If you're trained at something, you're skilled at something. Most people really would be tens across the board, but widely vary in their skills. Yeah. You know, most people are not super strong or super intelligent. Maybe intelligence maybe varies a bit more. Um, and we could both list off examples for the next half an hour of oh, really clever to. and really stupid people. We're not going to. Um, but I think most things, and you get the odd charismatic, but I think for a lot of the other stuff, people are you know, pretty those center are, mass. Yeah, but the skills do massively vary because that's the thing you're trained in. Um, anyway, so I'm going off things. So attributes is a clear thing. Are you thinking of having attributes in your game, Jeremy? You know, I guess, and and I don't, I wouldn't call this an unexamined assumption, but I think that I, I don't know if I've looked at it deeply. I, I guess I just assumed, you know, I assumed, and yet now you've got see, this ruins everything, but it it doesn't. It's actually helpful. Um, it would be really easy to just take the 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 that plus norm, the typical you know have a have a stat I have stats I have eight of them I have eight of them um, because I divided agility and dexterity um, I added perception as an attribute not a skill uh, so I've got I have I have eight wait, wait a minute your your perception is not linked to how wise you are but surely no. those are two things that go hand in hand Absolutely willpower not. and perception are the same thing. No, they're not. Sorry, sorry, just a dig at five e. Yeah, a dig at that norm. No, I I have eight. Um, I'm happy with them, but um, but I don't know. Maybe maybe you make a point there that maybe you go with skills and then you pick. You you could create a class of like um, and I'm just you know off the top of my head term features. You have additional features of the character that are that are like salient. Features like yeah, my character is actually really strong, or he's he's uh, you know, or or she's like you know really really perceptive that kind of thing. You could you could create features that someone would pick to to add to something, and so in a situation where something like you know perception would be useful, you would you would add that to a skill or factor that somehow into the role, and the rest of the and, way and you just assume average. So, and maybe you could take. You could say like, yeah, my my character's kind of a kind of a dope, you know. He's he's or he's not how's how's it, a guy who's just not very charismatic for some reason. You could get yeah. a bonus in something else because you opt to take a, a negative feature instead of a positive feature, and then you just ignore everything else because it's assumed to just be average, and therefore it's kind of narrative. I think it makes a difference okay. to how many skills. I think if you've got a short skill list of sort of like we're only going to have like ten skills, then those ten skills probably fall in so closely to your your attributes that you you don't need both they're probably over if you've got huge amounts of skills yeah. then maybe that's different okay but well, i think the, know, i almost think like the smaller your skill list is stat plus skill becomes yeah like the, your chance is like also you've got things like depends what it depends a lot on what your attributes are and we'll get to that we can do a quick thing about different attributes constitution is almost like constitution or toughness or stamina that kind of attribute yeah. is almost never used for any kind of skill thing it ends up it's what you roll saves against and it yeah. bumps your health but it's yeah, always unless, like uh, you know you've got some systems where skills. there's like an endurance skill like you know like oh which see it's just like, arguable is that more like a uh, innate trait you develop you know yeah. or is that something you like oh i i learned how to be tough when i'm so, yeah, like, so i've already got you thinking something. attributes are not a yes they are a, probably yeah i'm where where are you I'm, on this i I'm undecided. I did a version, kind of the last time I knocked up a thing. I I used what was in knocked up. Uh, what the fate? Not fair. Not fate. Uh, whatever the the green Ronin thing is that also powered. Uh, I can't remember anything. The space thing that we watched that's on Amazon. Why am I blanking on that? That's the one. Yeah. Yeah. The so the thing system. that powered the expanse. That's the, the one. Age system. Um, Adventure. That kind of had. Aging. That kind of had. Uh, you know. Your thing they didn't call it, I might have been called attributes, but some of them were like sort of fighting and accuracy, and then different things were yeah. inside those. Or like yeah. if you think of Star Wars, where you have like a one of your stats is like technical and one is yeah. mechanical, well, well, which we'll aren't attributes, this. but everything falls inside them. So then they're not your standard, your standard things. They kind yeah. of 
they're this mixture of sort of skill. You made a really good point. That kind of thing. You made a really good point, especially so you have a longer or you have a skill list. Like for example, um, uh, free leagues year zero, whether it's the dice pool or the step dice, you only have twelve skills, and those yeah. skills are each there. There are three groups of four, and they are they are categorized under a stat. Yeah. And so, yeah, that's a that's a really good point. And you know what? If I if I decided to go with something like dispense with attributes, really, but have like features, whatever, whatever I would end up calling it, those would be um, ex you could exchange those. Like, that is, you could, you know, if you are really strong, maybe that's helpful in intimidating someone. Maybe that's helpful in climbing up a wall. You know, it doesn't have to be attached to one skill. It's just, is this, it's like, it would be like a trait in 2D20. Like, how is this, okay, here's this trait. The room is on fire. In this situation, is that helpful to me or harmful to me or, or whatever? The feature would be, you could use it in different contexts. Did that, oh, hmm. Okay, okay. So I'm looking we, for it. Some of the other ones in here aren't overly useful. We've got this weird one. They had attributes, now it's got abilities. Here's one that you would un super unlikely to have, but I can I know we're going to have relationships. Now I've only ever seen this once, which was in Smallville. But actually, yeah. in Smallville it made sense. You were playing a soap, and mm -hmm. your relationship between another character worked quite well. Outside of that kind of soapy thing, or the weird soapy versions of Power by the Apocalypse, the original one. No, sorry, not Power Apocalypse World. I can't see that. Yeah. But something like June could, if you were doing like a proper June Game of Thrones, and the, what matters is the relationship between yeah. the characters. I can see that, but that's not really what we're doing. So we'll skip. I, you know, I, I could see if you have if you have that niche kind of story, or you have a story. I, Game of Thrones, I think, is a good example where that's that's even a place where like relationships or drives would essentially represent the same kind of thing. But you would really need everyone at the table to understand and buy into that. Otherwise, it becomes the stupid thing that drives often become. So okay. What right, you so you, you've said it then. Let's jump onto that. My pet hate in role-playing games. Uh, you called it drives, but the other word for it is values. Yeah. Uh, and you can see why values make sense. Okay, so like June has this. June has your characters have values. Um, I mean, this, I'll just give, give an example of the kind of stuff here. So this has got, this is, I can't just get this wrong. Duty, glory, justice, love, power, truth. Actually, that's from Smallville again. Um, you can see how that would make sense, right? Rather than what your character is good at, you can have skills for what your character is good at, and then you can have what's important to your character. And the more important something is, the better you should yeah. do at that. Although the thing I'm going to, I'm going go to, I'm going to disagree to a certain extent. I think that drives, like we see them, <clears throat> excuse me, drives like we see them in Dune, are a different animal than values like we see in Star Trek Adventures. I, I got you. I think that these the, the idea of them tends to work a lot, tends to be better than them in practice. Yes. I think that values like in Star Trek Adventures are far more workable and functional than drives in Dune. So I think there's a there, there's a way that you could differentiate. You could maybe if you had some like affirmative statements or something like that about this no, is I, really important to me, you might be able to work through that. But just like one word drives just is, it's too no, fluffy. I, I think even even when they've got a written description, I think it being a stat doesn't work as well as it being, this is part of my character. And then kind of, you know, right. if I play my character according to this value okay. or drive, then I get a, I get some kind of meta currency. Yeah, okay. And I'm if I completely. don't, I, I think that's good. The thing I don't like about drives and values as a, as a stat, as a statistic that you roll, you know, mm. that's one of your things that builds up what you roll for, is that people abuse them. Oh, yeah, totally. Oh, I'm doing this because it's important to my duty. This is for my duty. This is also for my duty. Yeah. And it becomes very hard for the, like, the GM to go, oh, yeah, well, actually, yeah, you can justify all of this. And then it becomes an argument between the player and the GM to, is, is it valid or not? So, yeah, yeah I, am, I am not a big fan of Rose. Um, so, obviously, I'm going to skip skills for a minute because, obviously, there's like one way of kind of, which is skills but not skills, is roles. Now, obviously, roles will be familiar to anyone that turns 2D20 because that is essentially oh, oh. what we have in Star Trek. I thought you meant mm. ROLL. So I was like, what? what? Yes. You meant ES. Um, yes, I, so, I see, th okay. this was in Cortex because they used it in uh, Leverage because you had, like, Hacker, Hitter, blah, blah, blah. I don't know what the others are. Um, but obviously, that is that is essentially what we have in Star Trek with, with discipline. You have, you know, your security and your, yeah. I don't know what they are. You know, the, the six departments. They're disciplined. Right. Well, they're, 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 I think they're, they're called departments, departments, but they were called disciplines before. Yeah. Yeah. 
um departments kind of works but then it doesn't because i kind of think like is, is that a department yeah you're, you're six different things in yeah. that's actually and you see how that works and it kind of it can almost work in like fantasy as well if you kind of go right you know you've got fighter the trouble is that you're over you're right fighter rogue wizard oh no this doesn't work because if you don't want to be a wizard or a priest you'll yeah so you have to think carefully. star trek is a perfect example of where it, that can work right and a leverage again the idea of the the different roles but some right. of the characters like a second role that works very really well um would you be considering that in your game well uh, no the answer is no no no, no, no. <laughs> I, I have been i have been because what i've been what i've envisioned is a like a world of darkness style um you know like m menu of buckets is is how i'm looking at it and to to help to help clarify things for people like hey i want to play the like the tough guy or i want to play the sneaky guy or whatever what i was thinking of doing and I, i've read up on like it varies in literature like the 12 archetypes or the 16 character archetypes mm -hmm. or something like that i've been looking at those and thinking about taking those or some of them rather and shaping them into for lack of a better term could be a role could be an archetype something like that where you would grab one of those and that would provide um a little bit of mechanical guidance you know points for like this type or that type of of, of character or something like that you know so if you wanted to play like the you know like i said the, based on those roles you could um you could do that you know, and actually speaking of this whole this whole idea of like features instead of stats that actually might work better because then it just becomes a couple of words like these are the things that you would you would add in that that's these different situations Speaking of that kind of thing, where you kind of have a list of different archetypes, there is another system of thought, which again, it does away with skills and it's kind of roles, but it's not pre-described, kind of pre-described. Have you ever heard of Barbarians of Lemuria? And then there's a, another one called Barbarians of the Aftermath. I have heard of them, but I have not heard of that as a game. So in Barbarians of Lemuria, or whatever it's actually called, it's kind of like a Conan thing. Yeah, um, clearly. There's a whole bunch of like, oh, let's call them jobs because I can't remember what they're actually called. And those work as your skills. So you go like, and you might have say five, points worth of them and each point would be like it's either a plus one or it's a dice because i can't remember how the system works but you'd be like right i've got two points in fighter and i've got one point in scout and i've got one point in merchant i'm making these up yeah. uh, and another point in something else and so anytime you roll a skill check your skill check would be those it'd be base jobs and then combat was done differently combat was done like you know so a diff completely different mm. way of working that but it was quite a clever thing of you know, like, oh, well, because I'm a merchant, I'm I'm good at haggling and I can talk to people. So I'm going to use my merchant thing uh, because I'm a scout. I can do the you know survival stuff. Again, it kind of can fall into that thing of like, can you justify why your character is good at something? But it was yeah. a nice, you know, it's again, it's a way of you rather than having skills. It was a way of, you know, it brings your character's background into the actual yeah. things you're rolling. So that, that, yeah, I again, I don't think I'll be doing that, but it's that's that sounds closer to what you were kind of saying yeah. if you're thinking how how can i get these archetypes in there's a way yeah. and actually if you're doing if yours is slightly more you know, filmic isn't a good word but because you're talking about like a horror as a genre and that yeah. to me always comes from film then actually picking the archetypes and yeah my guy's going to be um you know he's hero two and he's i don't know i can't think of any other archetypes <laughs> right no, I mean, like a, so this is the here's the 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 leader Here's the um, oh my golly! I read all of these last night, and now I, I know I've read them I've before, and I'm blanking. Them. Yeah, but yeah. Um, another thing, also, you talked about um, you know different different systems, uh, like combat versus skill usage. I, I really have, um, and I need to test this, but I have settled on a working version of this of the investigation system that is initially not based in any roles it's based in your rating and so based on how many points you have and skills it looks like they're going to be one to five so based on how many points you have in a skill you're able to ask a certain number of questions with no role when you step into a, a scene so what i want to do is ensure that proper and accurate investigations can take place because i do agree with the gumshoe take that 
figuring out what to do with the information and reacting to the information is a lot more interesting than having to go get all of it. Like sometimes it's interesting to feel like you, you unraveled a, you know, a knot, but it's the, but even then like thinking of like what questions to ask and like how to investigate a room or something like that, that's interesting. The, the rolling and seeing whether or not you successfully got it or not is not interesting. Doing something with the information is. And so um, what I've got is, is based on scenes. You have a certain number of usage, usages of different investigatory skills, which then when you expend that, you can then roll. Or if you don't want to spend those early, you can roll. You, can, you got a choice. So you can always try to seek out information, but you have a certain amount of usages of the skill that don't don't cost don't you you don't have to risk so mm. um but but yeah i i skills i'm trying to nail down and and it's tough actually because having a having a game where stories aren't tied to a specific time period is actually a bit of a challenge when it comes to skills and so I, I think I think I have a list of skills that are broad enough and interpretable, if that's a word enough. That and I and I've got some language that I added about that, like you know, recognize like I have one skill called that I think I'm calling it technical. technical yeah, there you go. I which, that works. which applies, which would be then knowledge and experience with what's considered to be the best technology for that time period because your average joe in any time period is going to be able to operate like really what would be considered mundane technology but like in the mid 1800s very few people and this is actually an example i provide very few people knew how to actually operate a telegraph in the mid 1800s but everyone knew that they existed no one had a problem with that many people yeah. utilized them the services of but they did not how, how, know how to use them and they didn't know how to like fix or, or build them. If you had a, a decent technical skill and you're playing a character during the Civil War, then you could justify knowing how to fix a telegraph. Whereas that would be different in like the late 20th century. Just but, to be clear for our various internationalists, he, he's talking about the American Civil War. Yes, I'm ta yeah, I'm not talking that, about like, what is it like flat noses and round heads or I something like what is yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, I feel half the countries in the world have had civil wars. That's true. They're very popular, unfortunately. Yes. Um, yeah, so hey, they just made a film about your country having one in the future, except uh, they made up really nonsensical parts for who it, because Texas and California were on the same side. Yeah, that, yeah, um, no, what? No. No, uh, no. Like, oh, sorry no. what no, no that, that they would definitely be on the wrong different exactly side There's no way whatsoever <laughs> um i know why they the anyway anywho. um all right one more before we talk about then yeah. skills then one thing i am seriously considering is something it's, it's kind of two different ways of looking at this one is distinctions but not how distinctions work in most cortex things where there's three things written at the top of your character and they're d8 distinctions in smallville were like big could be different things so for, for say for, for clark kent superman his distinction was like kryptonian he was d12 kryptonian and that gave him a bunch of stuff he could do like all his super stuff um but then for someone else it'd be like resources d8 because like lex was quite rich or it'd be invested so they use distinctions to be a, almost like a tag thing where there was a couple of things under it and it'd be different dice ratings now linked to that is how city of mist and its various offshoots that are coming out now work where you just have a bunch of tags so literally your whole character is just made of descriptive things and when you roll your dice you add those descriptive things in now it works in city of mist and again it's spin-offs because you're like right i'm gonna i'm uh, i don't know whatever I'm, I'm hitting someone right i'm gonna use my angry i've got angry as a tag so i'm using angry uh, i've got fist fighter that's another i'm using that and i'm using oh i've got this magic sword so i've got three tags i get plus three and therefore they can't rate those tags because i'm essentially considering a dice pull thing i could rate those tags i could have in the same situation you've got angry as a, a tag but maybe angry is a d8 and maybe magic sword is a d12 so more like a quarter so i could just have a sheet full of different words and when you go to do something you're allowed to pick let's say three i'm making numbers up here right right you can pick three things so you, and you, you go, would have you would have assembled a list of these that are of <laughs> your character and then yeah. when you take action you would have the option based on your situation to choose some 
Now, <clears throat> the only... But again, I'm just... That's a maybe that I'm thinking Yeah, of. yeah. Um, I could see that potentially, unless you had some kind of interaction between the choices and the situation, could become like drives. Like, well, I'm always yeah. angry, fast, and sly. You know, you're, and, and so you're always picking the ones that, that, yeah. that give you the best advantage. I know you and I had talked, we and I have talked on a number of occasions about the idea of, of um, like the GM establishing in a scene, like what is the, what's the tone of this scene? Like, is this a, is this an, is this a high action dangerous scene? Or is this a like subtle social interaction scene? And the types of character variables would interact with that differently. Like a character who's really good at kicking down doors would be less able in that, yeah. that social scene you know, so you, I think you'd have to have something that would cause an that's, interaction between those tags and what's going, like how well would those work or apply? Yeah, that's what I'm going to think. Like, I will probably have it in the GM from the GM side that says, well, actually, your difficulty is based on the, the approach you take. You've picked a bad approach. Yeah. And therefore, because your approach is bad, the difficulty is going to be higher. Right. There's like a good way of doing it. But yeah, I'm considering that because when I'm, when I'm potentially going into like a mixture of, you know, people might just be highly skilled or people might be have magic powers low level or people might have cybernetics and stuff. How do you marry all together? Well, Marvel Heroic worked it out by basically going, well, all of that stuff comes under power set sort of and, you know, then everyone can work on the same level. But they just had those just as powers. I'm thinking of expanding them to others. But yeah, so I might not. It might just be, right, well, I'll take everything that isn't a skill and they all go into that bucket um but that's again that's just an option which i like yeah which i'm thinking like yeah maybe um but no, maybe not and then the final one really is just skills and you go with a really you know it doesn't have to be stat plus skill we've already said but stat plus skill has been around for ages because yeah. kind of it works the, the thing i said like earlier i don't like about it i often feel that the it depends how much work the stat is doing how much work the skill is doing yeah. one of the things that really bugs me about D D is that like, you know, for something like dexterity does too much work because it gets used for everything, especially mm -hmm. in a modern setting. The minute you are in modern day or in sci-fi and then you use 5e, I remember doing this because I played Buck Rogers in, yeah. you know, the the night, the late, uh, I know, late 80s, early 90s. And dexterity was amazing because dexterity was your piloting skill and it was your shooting skill yeah, and all everything. combat is Athletics, basically shooting. It does shooting. everything. And it did everything. So it, it then it becomes too powerful. And it's really, so then you've got to like, break things up this is why often when i'm doing skills i will break up like heavy and light melee weapons um and i'll break up uh, guns into different weapons i don't like one yeah. combat stat because then it's too easy to become really good at, at combat without going well actually which actually yeah. maybe that is realistic but from a game point of view it's not much fun when someone's good at everything yeah see what i'm thinking is um what I had been thinking with stat plus skill for a dice pool is some of the skills would be like a skill like athletics. I'm just, I'm not going to break that down into, no. you know, cricket and <laughs> what, you know, whatever. I'm not, that's ridiculous. And I said that, I'm just like, I'm just sticking with this, but guns, you would have to pick a, you would have to pick a, like a, a specialty and, and, my idea is that once you have like so so you have one point in guns you pick your first specialty say handguns okay great when you pick up other specialties or if you don't have other specialties what i'm thinking is your whatever your rating is in a given specialty if the gm says yeah that would apply you could use that at minus one die because i mean shooting a handgun and shooting a rifle are two different things mm -hmm. um they're they're i mean it, it's quite different um, I, I quite like the thing you said. I don't know if you did do this in Aeris, but I'm sure you mentioned someone else. We're kind of like your first sort of couple of levels of a skill, like level one and two in guns, you can just have level one and two. But for level three, now you have to speak a speciality. Yeah, that wasn't, like, that, wasn't that, but I, that's that's kind of along the lines of what I was thinking. Yeah. Like I, I like that. I think that's good. Like your basic level of like you're, you're okay at driving. But to be really good, the top end now you have to spec. Or, or the other way is you actually only have sort of between one and three points of the base skill, but then you have specialities right. which fall under that base skill. But to get better, you have to take the specialities. Yeah, I'm just thinking, I, you know, I something like like, like academics. You, 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 the moment you say oh, I'm going to take academics, you have to pick 
you have to come up with a specialty. Like, oh, anthropology. So you have a point in anthropology. Well, anthropology doesn't mean you're going to have knowledge in, you know, zoology necessarily. So your GM might say, ah, you know, your two points in, in anthropology doesn't grant you a single point for an incidental use. It wouldn't grant it forever. It just means you have a little bit of bleed over within that broader category. And I think I have like 13 or 14, 12, 13, so I, I have somewhere in a range, like no more than about 15 or so skills. And some of them are those ones that would then have, you, you'd come up with your own specialty under it, kind of like a focus. But I don't yeah. have focuses. I just, you know, I just, but so if I decided to dump attributes and just use something like a feature or a salient feature, whatever you want to call it, then the skill points, that'd be your pool. But then you just your, make your skill points bigger. Depending on depending on the what probability I'm playing with, yeah, yeah, yeah that's a good point. Because that is one of the things you got to look like when you're. If you're like, I've got this sweet spot where really I can only be rolling six dice. If you've got stat plus skill, then your stat is only on a range of one to right. three, and your skill is only a range of one to three. But if you go, actually, I am ditching the stat. I'm just having skills. Now your skills get to be rated from one to six. Yeah. And so now maybe actually you can kind of go right. Well, actually, what I'm going to do is all skills have two parts. They go one to three which is the base skill. But if you want to go higher than that, you have to take specialities um, because then that gives you another thing to play. You know, everyone can be half decent academics, but you can only be this good at academics yeah. and then you have to start specializing because you need if, that. Yeah, I'll you, you might get that. base level. Because I mean, think about it. Like if you said, oh, hey, like if I represent a one, you know, like in, in um, well, in World of Darkness, you've got your... Um, your education levels like your general education level but and cyberpunk has that also but then you have all these other specific areas i would dispense with that yeah i, I gotta think about that because if i yeah, I, mean, if I ended up just going to just skills then i can adjust i i'm what i don't want is i don't want nine someone rolling a pool of nine or ten dice so you think so you see world of darkness that's feasible because your everything goes from one to five Correct. so your stat plus skill it's rare. If you, if you Usually, want to fight, it is. Yeah, you're but, normally but on you sort can. of like fours and fours maximum. But yeah, yeah you definitely can. Um, I mean, like Exalted goes silly because you can hit fives yeah. easily and then you have powers that give you more extra dice. And so that's how you can get up to your 15 and 20s. Yeah, I don't want that. Um, I, don't like want these Shadow. Things just, I don't want these things falling all over the table. Um, and I, I, mean, I can't remember. How, no, I, think, I think Shadow run off the top of my head, your stats and skills kind of go from sort of one to 10, which is how you can start getting up towards the 20s. You know which what, too, this, this also might solve, the because one of the problems that I've been running into is that, um, you know, with the dice pool system, you can tinker with the, the threshold number, at or above or at or below, whatever, yeah. to gain a success. You can tinker with the number of dice, and yeah. you can also tinker with the number of successes that you need. So you have three different yeah. things you can tinker with and all of them mess with the probability differently. And mm -hmm. I'm leery of including all three of those as possible dials to turn or, or thinking of them being available to both GM and player. It might muddy the waters. And it muddies the waters a lot more when you have a bigger, bigger pool of dice, it seems like. If I have a more limited pool, because what I was, here's what I was concerned about is I mean, you don't want to make a game where like you're failing left and right. No. Nope. But you also don't want to make a game where it's, as I say, like California Little League. I don't want that. Um, and so, uh, so I, I want, I'm looking for that, that sweet spot in the middle and where things started to break or feel like they potentially would break for me is where you had six or more dice in a pool, given the different numbers I was using. It turned out to be like, you would just be, you'd just be rolling over things. So I'm going to revisit that. Um, I think particularly when you're looking at which your guys kind of fun sometimes. Yeah, but when you think about your system is mostly normal level people yeah. who aren't going to be crazy strong no. or they might be dumb, but you know, then dumb could be just they've got poor academics, which is different. Right. Because um, maybe they're not dumb. Maybe they're just poorly educated. But actually, you your, your guys are not educated you, and stupid. Yeah, but your yeah. guys aren't you haven't got people that are like peak level humans. They're just normal average Joes. So their skills are really what's going to define them, in which case, yeah, you don't, you don't need stats. You yeah. don't, you need your stat, but you can just, and That's then your true. skills, you get more, you, your skills become more granular now because now instead of playing on, 
like you said, rather than a scale of one to three for stat and one to three for skill, because you don't want to go more than six dice. Now you can go one to six for skill yeah. or, and you know, one to seven. Slice the, the skill a little more. Have fun, oh. Hell of it. Go, go one to seven, because then if you have seven in that skill, you know, you're amazing at it. Why seven? Because seven's lucky. Oh, yeah. See, now, you know what I've just realized I want to do now? That's a prime number, too. That makes it cool. Guess what number do you think I want to go to for the most of things you can have in your master of dice you can roll? 11? I want to go to 11. Yeah. That would be cool. <laughs> I'm cool. just like, right. Because what I did want is I wanted to I wanted to be using all the different polys. I wanted to be able to use the whole lot and just you're yeah. rolling a bunch of different things. And I was going to do it like sort of, I don't know, Savage Worlds made where you're rolling a bunch of, but instead, what I don't like about Savage Worlds is I don't like two different dice. I wanted more like Cortex where you're going to roll like four or five dice. And, but you, I didn't want to add them. I just wanted to go target number. So obviously yeah. a 12 is like almost always going to put that kind. That's what I was thinking. Uh, not too far away from what uh, Free League does with its... Yeah, with the step dice. That I wasn't going to use it's six. It's actually really a dice. clean system. I was going to use four because then a D4 like isn't completely used. That gives me one more dice. But, but then I can't roll 11 dice. Yeah, that's too I really many. Want, I, uh, Maybe I instead really want... of 11 dice, you just you just focus on the number 11. And you figure out a way like 11 somehow becomes meaningful. Yeah, know? but you can only do that if you're rolling. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll just do what you said and play with D12s and then have 11 be the crit. <laughs> you want and 12, to you've got, 12, you want you've to gone beyond 11. it. You've gone over 11. So now 12 is bad. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I just, this is the trouble with dice. There's so many different options. I know. I know. It's, There's so many uh, different options in so many different ways. Yeah, and once you've picked one, then you're just like, oh, but this other thing sounds so much better. So yeah, so I'm not, I'm still tinkering my dice ideas. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm, I'm, do? I'm I I am gonna because I I'm hopefully my group gets together this weekend and we'll do a one off because we're missing some people. I um I I'm gonna I'm gonna try I'm gonna tweak my system to dump attributes and instead throw in some like bonuses to differentiate by type of character, like archetype of character. And I'm going to see how it works. So I will have a report about that next time we, we meet. I think I, what I need to do, and I said this to you previously, I need to write up and uh, like a fray, I can't think of the word for it. I basically need to write up some characters and just with pure description, just literally just text, mm -hmm. like six, six, a good number, six characters. These are six different characters you should be able to play in my game. And then work out what is the best way of mapping the different yeah. kind of ways you can do to that to those characters. Yeah. Because when I've written point. them out, it might be actually I don't, stats not important, roles important, or it might be that no roles are irrelevant. It's it's the powers that make these characters, or these are so disparate and do weird stuff that the only way I can do this is like a tag based thing where you yeah. have a list of of tags and those tags mean something. And then when I come to mate right you need to make sure that all these tags appear in a you know in a very clear list um so yeah i need to do that which but i would know, do also, some that, yeah, that keeps you that next week that keeps you rooted in the story side of your game i think it keeps you focused on the story instead of getting tied up in the mechanics and i i like story and character over mechanics but i have found myself in working on this game losing that and just getting completely focused on mechanics and so getting away from that i think is reminding yourself that why what do the mechanics exist for they don't exist for themselves i think the problem you've got and i'm going to have the same problem is that you don't have a setting you are playing in a yeah, genre that's true and i have a similar thing that i am not playing in a setting i'm probably the close way to say is i'm playing in a style i know what the style of my game is okay my game is sort of like at you know anime meets like computer yeah. games that's literally that's the style of my game i know there's this space in which my exam you know so like almost to some extent like outgunned is going for action movies and variations that i'm going for like like where i'm literally i'm going for cut scenes i'm going for like the intro trailers and cut scenes of films and yeah. games that's 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 like the style i am aiming at which means i don't have a setting but i can make up the characters that i want you to be able to play in my game Right. And that, that I can do. That's your priority. Um, so I need to do that. Which I, okay. So I need, well, yeah, I need to try and work. That's your that goal happens. because I'm, we're away and I'm away next week. We won't, oh, okay. record, we won't record next yeah, week so that you, you just time. went away. You, well, I have to go. I'm going out of town for work. I'm oh, okay. Vacation not... and I have to go yeah, out of yeah. town for work. 
So you have an assignment and I have a play test. So you got to catch up. Yeah. Great. So I may have made no progress by uh, next week. Well, hopefully I know I will have, that's my plan. So yeah, then I have yeah, to do I, it. My time right. does not look good for that. Perfect. Thank you as always for listening to Fluff and Crunch. You can join our Discord, you can subscribe to the podcast, you can subscribe to the YouTube channel, all through the links in the show notes. Thanks again, have a great day, we look forward to talking with you.